Have you got your app ready? But it involves one final step. If you happen to be taking uh, legal agreements or contracts of some kind, or maybe even a user sign up where they need to agree to something and it requires a signature for the legal processes of how your app is served or your service is served to the world, well, if you're looking to set up a signature pad mechanism for your app, you're in the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the signature pad plugin in Bubble. So if you go over to the Bubble plugins area and search for signature pad, it is this one here. And we'll go ahead and install that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to walk through all the setup in this video. So what we're going to walk through is both the element on the page setup uh, with the default UI and then with a custom UI, we're going to walk through the workflows for making those happen and saving uh, what, what you get generated when someone uh, fills out a signature on here is you generate an image and that image could be attached perhaps to the user record. So the user record just has a user signature field and that's an image. Uh, maybe there's a dip reason for a different um, data type that houses the signatures within your app. However, you might choose to do it. Um, I'm going to do it where we set up just on the user record. We're going to do create a new field and we're going to say user signature image. And we're going to make that an image type. So easy as that. And then what we're going to do uh, is I'm just going to redraw this onto the page. So you can see when you install that plugin, it ends up over here under visual or sorry, under input forms. Uh, just grab the signature pad element, draw that onto the page, and we're just going to center that and call it good. Okay, so with that onto the page, um, nothing's going to happen if we went out and did it until we did these two things. One thing is there's the trigger or the event that triggers the workflows, and then there's the workflow actions themselves as the second thing. So the first thing under elements when a signature pad is saved, this is kind of an event that gets triggered from this button by the default UI. There's a slightly different thing when you do a custom UI, which I'll show in a moment once we work through this part. But basically, when this is done, what we want to do, uh, you know, you could be creating a new thing potentially. Uh, if you had a new data type, like I said, you could you could make sig sign signature as its own data type, perhaps, and then you know hold a field in there for this image. But since we've tied this image to the user record, we're just going to go over to account, and then we're going to make changes to the current user. The thing that we're going to change is this signature image. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the signature pad, and this obviously this signature pad it won't uh, be there as as an option available to you until you've drawn on this element onto the page. So just make sure that you have that set up. So with that signature pad, uh, this signature pad, so let's see, signature pad A, yep, that's the one. So this signature pads, image URL. And then why don't we just go ahead under element actions, it's not under plugins for some reason, uh, but under in element actions, just do clear a signature pad so it just gets cleared out. And so let's go ahead and take a look at what that might look like. We'll check our data here, so here's our users. Um, we actually don't have any users to tie this to, so let me go ahead and create one. Just call this test, and got it. And then we're going to actually go and run as that. And I'm just going to send something in the same browser. We, I'll just refresh this window, and now we should be logged in at this user. Okay, so we got this curly queue thing. Save it. And then it clears out. It clears out because of that second work step flow step here. And then if we look over, over in our database, what we have here is this signature that we can see stored in our database. Great, tied to that user record. Now, um, yeah. So this is kind of the default UI. Uh, it's not that uh, fancy or anything. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go over here into this area of the uh, the property editor uh, for these the settings here and we're going to take away the save button and the clear button and then we're also going to take away the sign above and then I'll just show off perhaps or what could be perhaps a UI that you might use obviously you'll be making this to match the branding and fonts and everything else that matches your existing app 
and maybe we'll edit this style. Nope, nope, not the style itself. We want to just remove this style and let's just see what we have here. Maybe we'll say bold just because it's like a, a heading. Okay, so sign in the signature pad below and then we're going to add two buttons. Add one button here. Well, this one will say clear. And then this one will say safe. And again, these will be whatever you might have them to be. Uh, for your UI, just showing off some possibilities here so you can see how it's wired up when it's different. So now, if this did not exist and we had not set this up, we would have to set this up, this uh, event again. And here's where I'll show you. So, sure, why not? We'll do it. I'll just delete that. Element actions. So save a signature pad. So this workflow action is actually the same as hitting that default or that the save button on the default setup. And then so if you were only doing a custom implementation of this when you're watching this video and you're like, yeah, no, the default that I'm not using that. So then you would set this up and then when a signature pad is saved, which is so this workflow has run, it will trigger this uh, event. And then here you'll want to set up the other um, make changes to the user and then go and change where you have the data set up. So wherever that might be in yours, in this case, um, you know, the user signature image field, that is an image field that we tie to our database and then element actions, uh, also show off. So I won't put the clear there. And then what I'll do here is, um, we'll add this. We'll say when this clear button is hit, then we want to element actions, clear signature pad. Okay. So let's take a look at this as our final reveal for this video. Um, basically, if we go ahead and sign this and we hit save, we expect that over here in our database, just refresh this. And what it does is it actually overwrites any existing one. So again, that's why if there was perhaps a data type um, that was signed signature and that data type had a field for uh, signature image and you were every time that workflow ran you created a new thing a new signed signature data type with the field filled in of this image and then perhaps you tied the user to those things or so, you tied the user to the data type that holds the data then you might have a way to not have this be overwritten or you could perhaps have a list of images as the field type for this and then do an add uh, function for the for the workflow. So many different ways to save the data in your database. You're just describing the various options. So cool. So there's that, and that is basically it. We'll look closely for one second at this settings panel for this. Uh, basically, background image. Uh, no, that's not what, what I want to talk about. This background color. You could potentially. Uh, match some branding with your app through that setting. Um, you can play around with these minimum width stroke, dot size of pen, velocity. Um, let's see, as we turn this down, we can take a look at what happens here. And then as we turn this, let's say to 0.9, basically it just can make, see how the, it gets thinner there. You can just make it feel more pen like but again just total preferences on these types of things pen color so on and so forth uh, this stuff here for you know attaching a, attaching uh, the signature to some kind of uh, data type within the database I played with it I don't I recommend just using the straight-up workflow actions uh, seems pretty straightforward if you go that route so if you made it this far thank you so much for uh, watching and listening to this video. I hope it helped you out. And if you found it helpful, like or subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in another video.